Greetings. Joe here. And uh, pleasure to say hey. Um, what this video is going to be about is um, there's some talk about starting a meeting that um, is around a reading. And uh, it's suggested to be a big book study group discussion um and that's a good thing but i've got another idea there's a fresh history uh of a community out and it's called writing the big book and it's an extraordinary piece of work but i've yet to read it cover to cover because it's very long and has 10 appendices and oodles of footnotes and these things can make reading a bit difficult and perhaps um recommends it for group study in that it generates a shared discipline to plow through the tangents and distractions anyway so I'm going to be reading the beginnings of writing the big book. And that's not even getting into the chapters. There's eight recommendations or blurbs or literary commercials kind of thing. There's a couple of dedications and there's a couple of epigrams. And so just be in sharing those uh, will likely fill over a half hour. And so this is kind of uh, a rehearsal, get rolling, see how it goes. Okay, so it the book is Writing the Big Book, The Creation of AA by William Shaberg. And um, William Shaberg has his own website and he does numerous videos outlining the historical lessons that he picked up in doing research in generating this volume. And so this will be a nudge to check out him directly. And uh, so you're free to introduce yourself to him through YouTube just by searching his name. Anyway, I'm going to get into the epigram or the beginnings the blurbs and the first blurb I'm going to indicate the source first it's from Linda Ferris Kurtz author of recovery groups professor emerita eastern michigan university and here's what she said about this book special praise for writing the big book if you have read my husband's book, Not God, A History of Alcoholics Anonymous, you may think, as I did, that you have a good understanding of that history, and you would be wrong. Writing the big book zeroes in on the first five years in a way that no other history of AA has captured. And these years were critical. Like a good suspense novel, this book captures the day-to-day -day struggles these few intrepid men encountered over those years. In the heart of the Great Depression, how does a bunch of homeless alcoholics start a worldwide movement? Shaber's book tells us how they did it, tiny step by tiny step. So that's from Linda Ferris Kurtz. The second blurb is from the very Reverend Ward B. Ewing, DD, as in Doctor of Divinity, trustee and past chair of the General Service Board of Alcoholics Anonymous, retired dean and president of the General Theological Seminary, New York, New York. Those are 
quite the credentials, and here's what he has to say. For many in recovery, Bill Wilson is a Moses, freeing them from the bondage of addiction. As a result, a variety of myths have evolved around him, some encouraged by his own efforts to tell the story and to sell the spiritual program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Bill Schaeberg does a great service to the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous in his exhaustive examination of archival documents separating myths from fact. The result is a clearer picture of the beginnings of AA and the development of the Big Book, along with a rich and compelling portrait of Bill W. Less myth produces a much better story. This volume is a must read for anyone interested in the history of AA. And that's from a past chair of the GSO. Gosh, okay, that's blurb two. Blurb three is from William L. White, author of Slaying the Dragon. Okay. A stunning achievement, William Shaberg's eloquent storytelling rests upon a foundation of meticulous scholarship. Finally, we have an, a resource that draws upon decades of recent research into separate draws upon decades of recent research to separate fact from myth regarding the origin of Alcoholics Anonymous. Writing the big book is the most important work on the history of AA since Ernie Kurtz's Not God. It raises the bar for future studies on the history of addiction, recovery, mutual aid organizations. So that's William White. The next blurb is from Kevin Hanlon, co-creator of the documentary, Bill W. Shaberg's study of Alcoholics Anonymous is a true gift to AA and its membership, past, present, and future. His monumental research and incredible thoroughness demonstrate that far from being divinely inspired, the big book resulted from many perfectly flawed human beings working and living under difficulty and duress. The humanizing of the many figures in this story is invaluable. Shaber gives a, a real sense of who each person was and what their crucial crucial roles meant to AA's fundamental piece of literature. That's Kevin Hanlon. The next blurb is from Arthur S., AA, AA historian from Arlington, Texas. And <clears throat> with tour de force exposition, Writing the big book details the chapter-by-chapter -chapter authoring of Alcoholics Anonymous and provides a revealing anthology of its primary contributor. Schaeberg also debunks numerous long-standing beliefs of big book history. The revelations about Hank Park Parkhurst's role in particular cast a welcome and inclusive light on his critical importance as he is shown to be a true unsung hero. And that's Arthur Ashe. The next blurb is from Jay Stinnett, independent scholar, AA historian from Sedona, Arizona. In-depth research and masterful presentation of previously unpublished facts about AA's early history make for 
an explosive package. Schaeber humanizes the participants and clearly articulates how Alcoholics Anonymous emerged after a painful and arduous birth. It reveals the evolution of the 12 steps and the fundamental differences between Akron and New York meetings and cultures of sobriety in 1938. But far from dry historical record, writing the big book is lively, fascinating, compelling, and insightful. More like a thriller than a documentary. Wow. And the next one is from Glenn Chestnut, author of 14 books, including Father Ed Dowling, Bill Wilson's sponsor, Emeritus Professor of History, Indiana University, South Bend. This is a book that AA historians will want to read and make footnotes to from now on. The product of incredibly detailed research in the archives at the Central AA office in New York City and at Stepping Stones in Bedford Hills, New York, along with Lois Wilson's diary and a host of other primary sources. So that's Glenn Chestnut. And the last of the blurbs is from David Stickney, contributing editor of the Nietzsche Canon. <clears throat> Writing the big book surprises in how well it defines and demonstrates the actual condition of alcoholism, while so clearly rendering the portraits of its interesting cast of character. I came away with a much better understanding of what some of my dearest friends and family struggle with as alcoholics, along with a deep appreciation for the work that went into the creation of AA and how profoundly the program has shaped our culture. So that's David Strickney, and that's the last of the eight blurbs. Next is the two dedications. First dedication to my late to my lady Sarah, again now always, and in loving memory of King Dykeman, nineteen thirty four to twenty seventeen, continually sober from fifty six to twenty seventeen, over six days six decades in sobriety. And that, and both are not people that I know, but I may learn more to come. Uh, then we've got the epigrams, the opening quotes that it begins with. And the first epigram is from Bill Wilson, speaking in Fort Worth, Texas, June 12th, 1954, which is actually two months before I was born. So this is predates my existence by a couple of months. And here's the quote from Bill. I'd just like to spin some yarns. And they will be a series of yarns which cluster around the preparation of the good old book, Alcoholics Anonymous. Some people reading the book now, they say, well, that this is the AA Bible. And when I hear that, it always makes me shudder because the guys who put it together weren't a damn bit biblical. I think sometimes some of the drunks have an idea that these old timers went around with almost visible halos and long gowns and they were full of sweetness and light. Oh boy. How inspired they were. Oh, yes. But wait till I tell you. Dot, dot, dot. Ellipsis. Anyway, so that's from Bill W. In other words, he's saying that many 
don't remember the past very well. And the second epigram is from Dorothy Snyder, who was interviewed by Bill Wilson, August 30th, 1954, which is a week after I was born. Kind of funny. Anyway, so from the same year that the previous quote was from, and here it is. Well, this is switching back, but one of the things I feel vitally important is to get the story of how the book was actually written. We get so many distorted stories on the West Coast. People talk about the 100 men that wrote the book. Actually, there weren't 100, as Bill will bear me out. But he had 100, but he said 100 to make it sound good, as though it really was going to work. The people talk as though there were 100 men that all went saintly and were taken straight up to heaven. And God just guided Bill's hand. The Bill just sat there and let the words come. Come through. Actually, it wasn't anything like that at all. And then for emphasis, that last line, is brought up, brought back again. No, it wasn't anything like that at all. So that's the beginning of writing the big book, the blurbs, the de dedications, and the epigrams, quotes. So uh, I want to start small and just have something to start with, and that's something to start with. I think the first chapter may go more than an hour, and I don't want to burden a beginning. So I'll call that uh, the start, and I'll wrap the recording there. And hey, this is um, just a sketch touched out to the world, but it's going to be in the context of a meeting reconsidering itself and that's the front runners meeting and it's friday night at eight in vancouver and so we're considering shifting readings and i'm suggesting shifting the reading to writing the big book it'll be meaty and different and uh maybe engaging and if you'd like to engage with this topic Visiting Front Runners Friday night at eight in Vancouver. You can figure that out. And it's on Zoom and live currently, but it's up for discussion. And if you'd like to discuss that, there's a place you can. So thank you kindly for your attention. And um, here's wishing you well. Ciao.